As we'll start with the broadcast section with no embargo, followed by an embargo <coughs> section for 10.30pm tonight. No live tweeting during the broadcast section and use a microphone provided. Michael. Go ahead. Good, Michael. Um, firstly, the Premier League clubs have unan uh, are voting in favour of semi-automated offside technology for next season. Uh, are you in favour of that decision? Yeah, I, uh, I, mean, I don't know a lot about it, but if it means they make decisions quicker and it's clearer, um, yeah, all for it. Um, Newcastle tomorrow is a big game, St James is. I mean, we've seen another club, Everton, with, with more points deductions this week and PSR has been on the agenda. Is it difficult in terms of a club who have got a lot of wealth in terms of ownership, but obviously PSR is going to be looked at and potentially changed? Where do you stand on it exactly? Because in terms of unlimited wealth, but we need some kind of ruling, don't we? We're going down this rabbit hole again, are we? Um, we did this last week. Uh, again, it's, you know, um, smart heads are me in this space are locked in rooms making these decisions. I said last week, I think there's always got to be some sort of regulation around a safety net for, for clubs to make sure they don't overspend for their own good and, and also a competitive balance uh, within that. Um, but I've always felt not at the expense of you know, um, the quality that we're, we're trying to produce in, in the best league in the world. So, um, so again, I think from my perspective, I'll leave that to the guys who probably know better. At the end of the game last week at Forest, I noticed you were quick to t try and look for, for Pierre-Emile Hoybier. He, he made quite an impression off the bench um, on Sunday. We, we, how impressed were you with him? And he's obviously talked about potentially his future in, in January, but just more on that. You sort of looked to seek him out. Did he do exactly what you were looking for at half time? Yeah, no, he was him and, and Roddy was good. I try and get to all the players uh, after the game. Some of them get off quicker than others, so I've got to chase them down the tunnel. But um, yeah, no, I thought, I, I think I said after the game, I thought Pierre and Roddy come on. Coming on at half time really helped us last week. It was a game that kind of needed something a little bit different than what we had. I thought Biss and, and Pape did well enough in the first half and, and worked really hard. But, you know, I thought for, for where the game was at and the way sort of Forrest was setting up, um, having Pierre and Rodri in there with their experience and, you know, Pierre, particularly with his passing range, I thought we could really sort of use it to, to sort of start and, and start working and particularly switching the flanks and, and it worked well and well, Pierre's been good um, you know he hasn't started as many games probably as he'd like um, but whenever we've needed him he's done a good job for us and um, I think from our perspective we're in a good place at the moment where if we have a squad that I can make these changes you know within games or between games. Up tomorrow. Thank you. Seb. Hi Ange. Um, it's always difficult to travel to Newcastle 12.30 on a Saturday and we saw the game last season where Spurs were, I think, 5-0 down after 21 minutes. Are you expecting a, a tough challenge once again tomorrow? And have you watched that game back, maybe? Uh, no, I haven't. Um, and because there's no reason to for me. Um, and, yeah, it'll be a tough game. I mean, I don't think the 12.30 kickoff. I mean, we're, we're leaving today, so I don't think there's anything around that. So we'll have good preparation for it. And it's a tough game. It's, you know, they're... They're, they're obviously, um, you know, they're going through a tough time themselves in terms of injuries, uh, <coughs> like most clubs this year. But probably they've been, you know, hurt probably for a more prolonged period. Um, but you know, when I watch them, uh, and particularly at home, they're still a very, very good side. Uh, I think the crowd gives them a lot of energy, irrespective of who they put out there, and the games, irrespective of who they play against, tend to be <coughs> fairly high tempo because of the energy in the stadium. So. We're going to have to match that energy tomorrow. I mean, it's the way we like to play our football as well. So hopefully, um, you know, by, by bringing our own energy to it, we can, you know, we can sort of overcome the challenge. Uh, it's going to be a tough one. James Madison said it in an interview this week that you're trying to make them look at the bigger picture, more, more the long term. Can you tell us a bit more about how you see that bigger picture? Um, yeah, I mean, I'm not sure what he was referencing about, but, you know, for me... It's just, as I've always said, it's about continual growth. It's about not sort of being, you know, settling for, for kind of where we're at at the moment. Um, you know, we've had a, a decent season. We've had improvements in a lot of areas, but we know we've still got a long way to go. And, uh, you know, it's about constantly reinforcing the players that, you know, and the staff that, you know, we, 
we should really still be focusing on growth and how we can be better rather than sort of where we are at the moment. And, um, you know, don't, never lose sight of the fact that ultimately our ambition is to bring success to the football club and, you know, we're, we're not in that space yet. You've got a tough run of games coming up, probably the toughest for any team in the Premier League. How excited are you? as a manager going into those games? I think they're all tough. Uh, I'd be very surprised if anyone has an easy game. Um, we certainly didn't think it was easy against Forrest who are fighting for their lives or or Luton or um, you know West Ham. Um, I think every game, I think Saturday and we've got you know seven tough games to go, but I think every team's got tough games because I think just about every club's got something to play for. And uh, you know, um, I don't think it's about ladder positions right now. It's about knowing that you're going into a game on the weekend with uh, against an opponent who will be uh, you know, determined to, to gain something for themselves and we've got to be ready for that. Thank you. Jack, please. <coughs> and <coughs> last season, Newcastle finished 11 points ahead of Tottenham. This season, you're currently 13 points ahead of Newcastle. Does that underline your point about how Champions League qualification isn't necessarily the be-all and end-all for a football club? I mean, I, I guess I gave that as an example of yeah, one of the reasons why I don't think it's it should be a kind of you know endpoint or, or some some avenue that you think will get you to to kind of be um, su successful and sustained for a sustained period just because you have achieved that and uh, and certainly there's a you know there's a cautionary cautionary tale there that you know. Getting into Champions League also means greater demands. Demands on players, demands on the squad, um, and you have to be geared up for it, or else it can it can affect all parts of, of your season. So, um, you know, and I think it's been tough on Newcastle um, this year because I think they were probably you know, their progress last year was fantastic. Um, the reward for that was Champions League football, but you know, this year, um, for whatever reason, you know, it's 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 made a really challenging season on all fronts for them with the amount of sort of attrition they've had through the squad. Have you learned anything from how Newcastle have gone about it this year? No, because I, I don't think that's the way you learn. I think you learn from your own sort of journey and, and understanding of every club's unique, every sort of approach is different. Um, you've got to already have sort of a, a set idea in your own mind and uh, about how you need to set up and, and what you need for your, for your own growth. Um, you're obviously aware of what other, you know, clubs and, and other managers or people go through. But ultimately, um, yeah, I think um, from my perspective anyway, I've, what I've experienced in my career is that everything's a little bit unique and you never really know every all the details about somebody else's kind of trajectory. And, um, you know, sometimes, you know, there are some false lessons that lie in there that seem quite obvious, but when you peel it back, actually, you know, not really a good reference point for yourself. OK, pass to Ali, please. <coughs> Hi, Andrew. Uh, just check team news. Is Richardson still out? Yeah, he'll miss this week. Um, he's close, but with the weekend off next week, we just feel, you know, obviously, the last sort of two rounds are, are pretty stacked with games for us, and uh, <coughs> having him ready for that, I think, is more important. So, uh, But he's, he's progressing well. Got stuck down a bit of a rabbit hole myself yesterday. I was going into the how your squad will look this summer in terms of loan players coming back, homegrown requirements, foreign players, things like that. And I think you're going to have about 35 upwards of players in your first team squad. Is that something you have to tackle with the recruitment team before you can even start thinking about who comes in? Well, that's a, again, that's an ongoing process. I think it was similar last year when I took over. Um, you know, it's it's just part of the process of planning. I think you know, the difference from last year is that we're well into that sort of planning, whereas you know, last year we kind of had to do it on the run a little bit because obviously I came in um, you know, post the season and you know, we had a big squad then and we had, to, we had a lot of decisions to make about <coughs> players who were coming back from loan, players who needed to go out on loan, players we needed to bring in and move out. So um, I think this year we're, we're sort of a lot more you know, sort of calm in our approach because we've been working on it for quite a while, you know, Johan and, and the people in the football department. One thing I noticed within it, um, there's a lack of kind of club trained senior players in your squad at the moment. And if you get European football, not saying that's a target, but if you get European football, um, Oliver Skip would be one of those few club trained players. I think it's like three or four. Obviously, he needs regular football, hasn't played much, hasn't been getting in squads. Does that make it kind of difficult for him to, if he did want to maybe move on loan or it means you have to keep him next season regardless? 
no, um, you know, again, we're, we're quite we're quite comfortable in that situation as well. Every player, you know, decisions about individual players um, you know, will all be made in the context of what's you know, good for the club and what's good for the player and, and hopefully there's some sort of alignment there. Sometimes there isn't, um, but um, from our perspective, again, we're, we're comfortable that, you know, with the squad we have that we'll make decisions that are going to be sort of beneficial for us uh, in terms of our growth and uh, yeah, but a lot of those individual things uh, individual player decisions won't happen till you know postseason. okay we're finishing section with George at the back please <coughs> Hi, and um, I just wanted to go back to the previous Newcastle game and you'd obviously had a really good start to the season but that was the time when you had the suspensions and injuries um, I think you'd lost four out of five going into that, even though performances had been good. How significant did that 4-1 win feel at the time, or even now? Um, yeah, look, I think it was it was important in the context of, like you said, the results. Uh, obviously, you don't want to go through too long a spell where you're not picking up um, you know, wins, because obviously that affects kind of the the course of your season um, but you know as you said I thought our performances prior to that were still pretty strong um, we obviously weren't getting over the line for one reason or another but um, I thought on that day we, we, we played really well we were really um, aggressive I th our front third play was probably you know the area that we we kind of got most joy out of on the day and um, yeah it was a pleasing result especially at home because we dropped a couple of games at home we probably shouldn't have because our performances were good enough but we just you know, we just lacked a bit of cutting edge in the front third and made some mistakes defensively. So, I guess you know, from the results point of view, it was uh, <clears throat> it was important. But from a performance or some sort of extra significance, no more than any other game. And um, you got the two-week break after this match. <coughs> Is there any kind of plans to arrange a behind closed door friendly, or do you kind of feel like it will just be a normal two weeks of training? Um, yeah, we'll. we'll We'll probably just keep it in house. Um, you know, we'll train right through. We, we kind of feel that we get sort of better output when when we kind of use the group and, and push the group as a whole. So um, yeah, at this stage, the plan is to train through and uh, sort of get ready for for the running. And um, just finally, away from the men's team, the women's team have got a really big game on Sunday. Um, you, you watched them, didn't you, back in December? I mean. How helpful are you and, and everyone at the club that they can get over the line and make the final, FA Cup final? Yeah, um, you know, I think Rob and the girls have, have been outstanding this year. Again, you have to remember, you know, they had disappointingly year last year. Rob's come in and he's, he's changed a lot of things and, and in terms of their football. And uh, But I can see that they're building, you know, some real belief. And um, look, it's a, it's a semi-final of a cup, you know, and it's great that it's at the stadium. I'm sure the girls will get plenty of support and... Um, you know, they've, they've had a great deal of belief to get to this point. You need that for a cup run and uh, hopefully that, uh, you know, that comes out again on the on, on the weekend and, and they get to a final, which would be great for them, but great for our club. OK, we'll end the broadcast section there and move on to the embargoed section.